Grade 8 math number 9.5b, identify a sequence of transformations. In this video, we're going to look at a coordinate plane and a transformation and figure out what happened to it, okay? Images have the same side lengths and angle measures for translations, reflections, and rotations. Two figures are congruent if one can be obtained from the other by a sequence of these translations, reflections, or rotations. So two figures are equal to each other if one is gotten from the other one, okay? If we get one from the other. Congruent figures have the same size and shape. So when we're told that two figures are congruent, we know that they went through these transformations on the coordinate plane. If you look at one and look at another one, and we know that they're congruent, we know that they went through this transformation. We have to make sure we label each vertex correctly, otherwise it's going to get really confusing. And we need to remember which transformations change orientation. Translations, the sliding ones, do not change orientation. There's no change in how it's sitting, its position. But for reflection and rotation, there is a change because reflection flips the orientation and the rotation turns the orientation, okay? So reflecting is the mirror image, it's the flip. Translating is the sliding. Rotating is turning around a center of rotation, like this point on his belt, or if the center of rotation was in his head, he'd be rotating this way, right? Okay, so remember that the first is the x value and the second one is a y value in the coordinate pair, all right? And we've got two shapes. We've got A and B. So what sequence of transformations will transform A into B? So if we started with this one, how could we get to that one? Well, the first thing we would do is reflect it over this y-axis. Then, if you look here, this is only one unit away from the y-axis. So if we reflected it, that point would be right here, one unit over. See? That would be a perfect reflection. It would be right there. But look, it's not. It's over here. So that means not only was it reflected, but it slid, it translated. Okay, so we reflect it over the y-axis and we translate it one unit left. Okay, so we can see it's reflected, it's flipped. We know it's translated, it slid right, it slid to the left. Okay, it says right here, I'm sorry, it just slid. So, it slid left. So, we reflect across y and the rules for reflection to go across y is we multiply the x values by negative 1. Remember how the reflections are opposites? If we want to go across x, this line, then we'd multiply the y values by negative 1. But to go across y, we do the opposite, see? To go across x, we do y. To go across y, we do x by negative 1. So we multiply all the x values for these points in A by a negative 1, and that'll tell us where they're supposed to be for the reflected version of this shape, then to slide it to the left, we need to subtract one unit from all the x-coordinates to translate it, that one unit left. Here's the translation rule. To go left, we have to subtract from the x-coordinate. So we would subtract, it's translating one unit, so we would subtract one unit from all the x-coordinates of the reflected version, okay? Not from A, we would reflect it and, and we would subtract one unit from all the y-coordinates of the newly reflected image, okay? Now, if you're really confused and you don't know what I'm talking about, you have two choices. You can go back to 9.1a and start over and watch those videos because you probably missed them. Or, if you sort of understand, watch the very next video, 9.5c. I'm going to do this step by step in detail, okay, using these rules. And we're going to switch it from being here, and we're going to rotate it counterclockwise, all right? So maybe that'll help you. All right, I'll see you next video. Bye.